Well, good morning. Happy Sunday and uh, such a great day to be here in the house of the Lord and I'm so glad that we're able to get together, that things are progressing in a way that I'm able to speak to you for a few minutes, share what the Lord's been doing uh, during this time of, of lockdown and uh, uh, sickness. I'd like to begin with a word of prayer. Father, I just ask that you would be with each one of us this morning, that you would show us your, your peace that passes all understanding, healing for those that are sick, and, and Lord, that you would just be in our midst today as we open your word up and see what you have for us today. Please bless everything that it said and done today, Lord. May it edify and lift us up in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Well, as most of you know, by this time, um, I was diagnosed with uh, and tested positive with COVID-19 on uh, Monday. And uh, on Sunday, just, just so that you know, I, I did not feel uh, 100%, but I didn't feel very badly um, Sunday morning when I came to church. It maybe felt like I had a, the beginning of a cold coming on, and that was it. And then sometime in the early afternoon, I began to feel really fatigued, and I started to have these uh, body aches that were just unbelievable. I haven't experienced that, I don't think, ever in my life quite to that extent. And uh, that lasted throughout the afternoon and the evening into the night. I didn't sleep a whole lot on Sunday night. And Monday morning, I decided that I should get tested. So I got um, into the car and drove over to uh, Shelby and was tested over there uh, because uh, they were offering rapid tests and uh, they were not offering those in Chester at that time. So I wanted to know right away if I had it. It's maybe my impatience, but also my concern for our, our congregation and not wanting to have inadvertently spread it to people and not be able to let them know. So um, I tested positive um, on Monday and we began the process of, of letting people know um, that may have been exposed. And thank God the uh, uh, people that I've spoken to have been not only gracious, but also I have not come across people that have inadvertently been put in harm's way that we can tell so far. So thank God for that. Um, we There are some other people that have tested positive in the church, but they were not exposed at that service from what we can tell. It, was, it would have been exposure happening the week before. Um, so with that being said, it's been a week of ups and downs, and uh, there's been some times when I thought it couldn't get any worse, and then it did. Um, it was like a, a bad flu. It was not something that had me on my deathbed, but there were times when I was... Um, uh, when my breathing, my oxygen level went down to about 90 or 91, they say 88 or less is a danger zone and you need to go to the hospital. On Wednesday, I actually went to the hospital um, in the evening because my breathing was uh, bad. My, my chest was in pain and my oxygen level had gone down significantly. Not to 88, but it was around 90. And so with that being said, they gave me at that point some treatments, some antibiotics. They gave me uh, breathing nebulizer treatments while I was there and then sent me home with some. And ultimately, we um, uh, began to see a little bit of improvement there. But again, it was up and down for the whole week. Um, I would Thursday, I, I felt better. Friday, I was not as good. Um, Saturday, I was a lot better. But this is where it becomes... Um, a situation that I believe the Lord stepped in and on Friday and Saturday and began to change my heart and allow me to see what I'm going to share with you today. Um, also, I had an opportunity during uh, the day on Saturday. I was praying, uh, being prayed for by a, a dear brother in Christ here in, in Chester, um, and he, uh, as he was praying for me and uh, with me and. Uh, we were just believing God for healing. And I, I was sitting there praying in the spirit and uh, 
and I just felt this wave of uh, uh, just warmth uh, flow over me. And I knew at that moment that the Lord was touching my body and he was healing my disease. Um, as, as the Bible says, that he heals all of our sickness and disease and that by his stripes we're healed. And, and I just believe that today. And, and I want to give him all the glory and all the praise for the healing that he's doing in my body right now. So with that being said, before I continue, I'd like to also say we have been so blessed by uh, people in our, our church family and the community and uh, brothers and sisters in Christ across this town uh, with food and uh, running errands for us and and doing anything that they can to even to bring us things as simple as a uh, you know, uh, an oxygen sensor uh, from the from the pharmacy or whatever, so that we could continue to heal and uh, and not have to break our quarantine to to get the things that we needed. So uh, it, we we are just so humbled and blessed beyond measure by all of all of you in in this community who have just reached out and shown us so much love and so much. Uh, sacrifice of your own needs for us, even homemade soup and uh, just some amazing things. So thank you guys so much. <coughs> As I was going through the last few days, I started to realize that focusing on my sickness wasn't getting me anywhere. And so I was reminded of the story in in Matthew chapter 14, where uh, Jesus had just gotten done feeding the 5,000 uh, with uh, five loaves and two fish. And uh, after that, in, in chapter 14, verse 22, we pick up with the story of what happens after he sent the people home, after they had ate their fill and listened to Jesus' teaching. And then Matthew says in... In verse 22, immediately Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. This is lesson number one. The first thing we need to do is to pray. And, uh, and Jesus said later that night, he was there alone and the boat was already a considerable distance from land buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it have you ever felt buffeted by the waves of this uh, uh of life coming against you well th at this time even though the disciples had just got done watching a miracle of five thousand people being fed they were being buffeted by the wind and waves and and just the seas around them and they thought they were going to die and there's times during this past week, I didn't think I was going to die, but I wished sometimes that I would either get over this or die because it was so painful and kept me so uncomfortable for the whole week. Anyway, shortly before dawn, so Jesus let that go on all night for them. And shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. And when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified and said, it's a ghost. And they cried out in fear. You know, think about that. They've already been buffeted and tormented all night long. And then Jesus comes out and they think, oh no, it's a ghost. What? How can this night get any worse than it is? But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. And I felt that Jesus was saying that same thing to me. He was saying, take courage, don't be afraid. It's I, I'm here and I'm taking care of you. And all you need to do is believe in me. So Peter must have felt like Jesus was speaking, speaking directly to him. Maybe he was very afraid. And he says, Peter replied, Lord, if it's you, tell me to come to you on the water. And Jesus said one word, come, come to me. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came towards Jesus. He stepped out in faith, knowing that Jesus was going to protect him. But when he saw the wind, and here's where it gets real, when he saw the wind, he was afraid and began to sink and cried out, Lord, save me. How many times do we know that Jesus can save us, that we, we have trust and faith in him, and yet 
we look around and see all the waves and the issues that are coming up around us. And we ended up not being, uh, not having focus and faith on Jesus. And immediately Jesus reached out in his hand and caught him and said, you have little fee, faith, why did you doubt? And when they had climbed back into the boat and the wind died down, then Jesus, or then those who were in the boat worshiped him saying, truly, you are the son of God. The lesson that I got from this was Jesus wants us to focus on him during the midst of our struggles, during the trials that we're faced with, the enemy's attacks. And I believe that this is just one more of the enemy's attacks. Satan does not want the message that we've been preaching and that our church has been learning about to get out there because the spiritual warfare is real. And if we're equipped for battle, then we'll, we're going to be effective in that, in that uh uh, spiritual battle. So Satan does not want us to be equipped, and I think he's absolutely trying to get anything he can in front of me so that we don't end up hearing the gospel, the word that the Holy Spirit's given to me. So with that being said, I believe that <clears throat> um, when I started to focus on the, the Holy Spirit and on Jesus, and not focusing on my problems is when I began to get better on Friday and Saturday. This morning I got up and took a shower and shaved and did everything I could to, to make it look like I'm not sick because I believe in Jesus' name I am healed today. That doesn't mean that I'm not going to take care of myself, but it does mean that I'm not going to live in fear anymore. You know, Jesus said in Luke 8, 22 to 25, uh, it's, he's talking about having uh, been in the boat. He and the disciples were crossing the Sea of Galilee, and it says that Jesus was asleep in the bow of the boat while the storm was raging all around. And basically, they got so scared that at one point they woke Jesus up from a deep sleep because they were worried that the boat was going to capsize and they were all going to drown. And Jesus said, Where's your faith? And then he rebuked the wind and waves. And even it says that the disciples were amazed because even the wind and the seas obeyed his voice. And so uh, we know that Jesus has power over everything in this world. We know he has power over sickness and disease. He has power over COVID. But there's so many other things that that fear begins to take over our lives in, whether it's COVID, whether it's the uh, um, effects of COVID, if you have it, maybe the things that were going through my mind, like, is this something that I'm going to fight with for the repercussions of it for months or even years, or maybe the rest of my life? I mean, you hear all these things on the news about people who have long haul disease and uh, they have uh, irreparable damage to their lungs. And then, you know, you think about that and you say, is that going to be me? Or, uh, you know, you look around and you see the political landscape and the possibility of what might happen on Tuesday or beyond with our election and, and our government. And we think to ourselves, you know, how can we ever, how are we going to survive? And some people's fear is just elevated to the point where they can't even function right now. But uh, Jesus says, oh, you have little faith. Have you no faith? I have control over everything. Even the winds and the seas obey me. So Jesus has control over every situation, whether it's your personal health or, or the possibility that you might get COVID or not get COVID. He has control over the government. He has control over everything in this world. And we just need to trust in him. You know, the future of our country is in his hands, not ours. Now, we have a, an obligation and a right to vote, and I believe we should all vote the way that we feel that God's telling us to vote, according to Scripture and according to the 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 things that God has ordained that, that are sacred to the best of our abilities. Now, everybody sees those things a little differently, but I believe that we need to search the Scriptures and search our hearts, see what the Holy Spirit's telling us, and then vote with our uh, uh, the vote that we're given to uh, have any impact that we possibly can. But ultimately, that's in God's hands. 
So we do our part and then we allow God to do his part. I want to just encourage you today as we begin to, to close this out, uh, keep your eyes on Jesus. When Peter had his eyes on Jesus, he was able to do super, supernatural things. He walked on water. When Peter had his eyes on Jesus, the wind and the waves had no control over him. But the moment that he took his eyes off of Jesus and to put him onto the, the wind and waves around him, he began to sink. And he would have drowned had it not been for Jesus lifting him up, reaching his hand out and pulling him up and bringing him to the boat. And so today, don't let the wind and waves that are crashing against your uh, all around you uh, control you. But rather, keep your eyes focused on Jesus. The Bible says in Romans 8, 14, and 15, the fear is of the devil. But we keep our eyes on Jesus, then that fear is not going to be able to overtake us. We're a child of the King. The Holy Spirit lives in us. Also, 1 John 4, 18 says, There's no fear in love, but perfect love casts out all fear. Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but Jesus came to give us life more abundantly and life to the full. So today, <coughs> as, you, as you focus on, on Jesus, just let out all the cares of the world just melt away. I remember the old song um, that we sang as a kid uh, when I was a kid in church called uh, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus, Look Full in His Wonderful Face, and the things of earth will go strangely dim in the light of His glory and grace. And that's what we need to do today. We can't control what's going on around us. Satan is in control of this world. But Jesus is ultimately in control of the destiny of this of this world of our lives of everything that we see around us and he allows sin to have control right now for a season but one day the bible says that every knee will bow every tongue will confess that jesus is lord and then jesus is going to come back and he's going to reign in the new heaven and new earth and if we know him and are uh, followers of Jesus, and we have a relationship with him, we've allowed him to, to be Lord of our lives, then we will reign with him for eternity. Hallelujah. Let's pray today as we close. Jesus, I just thank you for your healing power, for your love and your mercy and your grace. Lord, I pray that our country today, which is in the midst of a battle that seems worse than any maybe ever but certainly since the uh, civil war lord i pray our country would begin to see healing lord that people would begin to trust in you and not in their own understanding their own abilities but rather that our country would repent and come to you lord we turn for our from our wicked ways that we would abandon things like killing uh, of innocent babies in the womb, that we would begin to get back to our roots as a Christian nation. But Lord, if that's not in your in your plan, we understand that. We yield ourselves to your holy and divine plan for our lives and for this country, Lord. We only seek to follow you and we keep our eyes focused firmly on you, not on the, the battle that's raging around us, the, not on the, the wind and the waves and the seas that are trying to drown us at every turn, Lord. Lord, I thank you for healing in my body and, and healing from COVID-19, Lord. I pray that you would continue to be with each person that might be affected by that right now, Lord, that you would heal their bodies as well, that you would allow them to come through this with no... Um, no adverse effects at all, that there would be no long-standing uh, issues with their bodies, and that they would be healed completely in Jesus' name. Lord, be with each person that may have been exposed. Help them not to contract the disease, but rather to be healthy and whole. And Lord, I pray that you would continue to use us in our church and individually 
to reach people in this community for you. Lord, we know the time is near. The end times are coming, if not already here, Lord. And the only thing that matters right now is how many people we share the gospel with so that they don't miss out on the, the glory that is to come. Lord, we thank you and praise you. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Well, I just thank you once again for all of your prayers, your concerns, for the people that have helped us physically while we were quarantined and, and remain quarantined. Uh, just thankful so much for, for all those things. May God bless you and keep you and, and uh, make his face shine on, on you today. And we will see you hopefully next week. I'll keep you posted during the, the week, but I believe that we're going to uh, be here uh, live in person next Sunday. God bless you.